Hey guys, Tyro up here bringing you a 1v1 today. We are on Colodny Firma. I can tell you spawning on the right hand side we have the true successor playing as OKW. Immediately going for Grand Offensive. Let's go offensive some from the left. We have Eternal Sunshine of Spotlier's Mind. Playing as US forces with Urban Assault, Mechanized and Infantry. This is a Patreon backer submitted game. True successor around 320. And uh, Eternal Sunshine uh, in the mid 90s. Which is a good movie, by the way. Put a very weird capping order. I think this, do the Stern Pies run here to here. Uh, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. So it can be a bit awkward out on this side of Claudney. A good cap in order. Now scrapping it out for the muni point. Eventually outnumbered though with the two on one. I think my preferred, I still want to wire this off. I think my Sturmies often run here to here. And then my first Fox screen here comes down here. And then build some sandbags. They go here, here, sandbags. You might want to wire this off as well. The stern pies will maybe go into the center to wire from there. Got numbered up here as well. Just checking. There's a bit of negative cover on the retreat path here, so you always got to be wary. Getting some wire up there, eternal sunshine. Stumpai so far have been out of the action. This is kind of what you want to avoid if possible with OKW. You don't have to rush in and get into a fight. Like straight off the bat, right off the rip. But you don't want them to be the squad that's out the back capping and not seeing any action at all for minutes on end at the start of the game. It's kind of your only advantage. you got to uh, take advantage of it. Coming around the corner though, prevents the uh, decap on the muni point. Good control through the center. Could even be worth maybe going for a dash into this building here, trying to control that and then try to decap these two points. Going for a wide angle. Going to charge straight in though. Some nice heavy cover against the building and against the uh, rifleman. Oh, but they've got the rifle they launch, that denies the cover. Looks a little bit awkward for the true successor here. Now the cover attack. being turned against him. The rifle nade launch making a big difference here. Good incendiary grenade trying to do, deny that heavy cover works pretty well. Does complete the decap, but still the stern pies out of the out of the fight for such a long time. Needs to be uh, reassessed. The, uh, the capping orders here. Doing a decent job. Trying to get some sandbags up. Might be tough to finish them. Decent idea to run up here to try and retreat. Don't want to retreat down through this area. Looks like this hasn't been wired off, so the retreat path might have gone through this direction. Most of the time that does get wired off quite early on, but not in this particular case. So that was actually a good move. Running up here before starting the retreat. So this rifle made launch is really making life miserable for the true successor. Here come the stern pies now, but it's into a two on one, charging across negative cover as well. And into the lieutenant with the Thompson. It makes it a shaky engagement to start off with. M20 coming in uh, for eternal sunshine. Managed to hold up here for quite a long time. Now getting forced away. Heavy truck, waiting for deployment. A decent amount of harass onto the fuel point. Boys, you Got the to flak half track in the build at a, a fast timing too. This is a good time for the flak half track. Oof, look at that lag go. Get hit. Get hit. Comes the 18-8. 
Oh, looks like maybe the model throwing it died, so it ended up taking quite a long time to fire off. Ends up making that a bit of a shaky AT grenade in the end. Hard to know that that's going to happen though. Now losing control to cut off the at least the wire off here, stopping that from being a disaster. That's why even as OKW, I do think it's quite nice to wire this off, even though it takes a long time with the Sturmpire reinforced wire. Good connection there from the flat half track. G43s on the fuse layers, which is good. You want to upgrade those before the STGs generally. Got the medics in the build next. To delay the healing to get this flak out a touch faster. 50 cal now for Eternal Sunshine. If he was planning to go for the Stuart, this does delay it a little bit. Feels like he needs the healing. I mean, honestly. I don't know. He might have been able to get away without it. But yeah, only one commander with rifle nade launchers, so that means urban assault. The enemy is overrunning one of our capture points. Gonna worry about that Calliope later on in the match. 20 coming down. Waiting orders. Okay, for some vulnerable targets, but uh, there hasn't really been any, been, uh, any capping down here for a long time, so... It's not likely to be any OKW infantry down there, really. So maybe not the best movement with this M20. Does eventually find these stern pies. I think they were trying to go for some mining, perhaps. Interrupted. Now the M20 doing some nice work. The flak half track. Okay, pops the Shrek upgrade. Gets a decent connection. Okay, so next for the true successor, which makes sense. You would be expecting the US player to probably go... Uh oh, running around this blind corner could take a couple of teenades. We get the uh, flak into some pretty big trouble. Bazooka's coming through the center. Pop smoke. M20 might even be able to finish the job though. He's got pretty decent penetration on the M20. Oh, and where's the bazooka? Bazooka could have charged in there for the kill easily. Very lucky break there for the true successor. You gotta be careful about being parked so close around a corner like that. Sure, you can sometimes do big damage as the unit's mega clumped up coming around the corner, but if you don't have the backup, you can find yourself in some trouble if you take the 18 nade like that. But yeah, the M20, I think he's got, yeah, it's a pretty good pin. He probably could have finished the job. He might have lost the M20 in the process, but. I think that's a trade I'd be willing to take. Now open. M20 coming in from the side, the Rakitin looking for an angle. You can attack round through that section. Not like the deeper trees back here, but I believe through here, so... Could have gone for something there, but the 50 cal inside the building... Tough to handle. And on this map specifically, might be worth considering going for an infantry support gun. That's, there we go. Cancel the MG34 going for that. Because these buildings are a real nuisance to deal with. Uh-oh. Ooh. Found the repairs. Nearly knocked out the Sturmpies. Sturmpies had an opportunity to fire off a Shrek there, I think. But playing it safe, just retreating. And now I've got some Rangers. Heading onto the field, so once True Successor sees the Rangers, knows that the Stuart's definitely not going to come at that stage. It is already maybe a little bit late for the Stuart, but Rangers guarantee it. In terms of manpower, wouldn't have enough for that. All of this. Here comes the infantry support gun now, though. Pretty good building control at the moment for Eternal Sunshine. Hiding around the corner here. Runs out of the capture circle, which is interesting. Got some tech rounds with the rifle nades. 
Flag half track's right there. Its turret is facing this direction though, so it will take a while to spin its gun to face the enemy. Stempire's hoping for the wipe, but... Oh, they get it! Maybe it was from the blob arriving, actually. Nicely done. That's a big one. You're under this much pressure. That holding its ground here. I think they're actually doing some decent damage. Gotta make sure you keep the suppression on the riflemen so they can't close in for the 18 8. And yeah, the building goes down. Eternal Sunshine may be biting off a bit more than he can chew, throwing out the uh, nade now. And 20 coming through the center, but there are kittens there, and so is the Sturmpire Shrek. Doesn't quite get the job done. Smoke now on the flak. The Rakitten going down fast. M20 soaks a Rakitten. I mean a Shrek shot surviving. Here comes the Bazooka and there goes the flak half track. Gotta be very careful, you know, taking that AT nade. Spells the end of the flak half track. Incendiary grenade would be very nice here. Doesn't quite have the munis for it. So the heavy cover working out for Eternal Sunshine. And going to be able to get a lot of territory on the back of that as well. So this is one of the better rifle nade launcher applications I've seen. Maybe it's quite strong on this map with the uh, relatively high number of cover positions and strong buildings. Getting some great value out of it, but... There you go, the ISG finally breaks the cover position. It breaks the units behind it. it. Can be decent in these situations when you're under this much pressure just to send one squad out to the other side of the map as the OKW player. The player who's lost a lot of territory. There's easy territory for the taking. That way not as vulnerable to uh, like running into an enemy's machine gun or something and just uh, being forced away. In this case, you know, those squads were I think chasing him for a wipe or something. Have to push in quite deep to take control of this building with the machine gun but it looks like it arrives there slightly too late. And jump into this one instead. It looks like Rakim's a little exposed. Without a uh, flak, this is a much tougher defense. Another kitten has to retreat. So M20 uncounted. Jumping onto the cutoff. ISG softening up the uh, machine gun out the back though. And quite low. Stumpo with the Shrek not joining in, but could do now. Should do now against the M20 Triforce away. We have to worry about the Molotovs here. There's a preemptive jump out. Saw that one coming. Could get the kill now and does. Okay. Nice. G43 is getting the wipe. Keeping things competitive in spite of the true successor suffering on fuel control. Might be a bit aggressive jumping into this building though. I think they launch it there now. It's going down fast. Fuse there should probably be charging into the cover. They have not reconnected the cutoff at this stage. Jumping back into the building for some more rifle nade action. Grenade launcher rather. Rifle nades when they're in the uh, firing position. Of course. Probably been saying that wrong this entire game. Good, good idea from mine. I shut down that M20 touch, but oh boy, here comes a Sherman. It does have a decent amount of fuel, but with the Sherman arriving, uh, can't really rely on that too much. And has been connected through the center of the map now, so it doesn't really need the cutoff. We might do soon with these US troops decapping and a bit of damage from the ISG but luckily the barred up riflemen don't chase it down. Back base getting set up here covering the cut off. 
chain. Might arrive just in the nick of time Sherman, to defend. Go. True successor may still need a second raquette in here though. Struggling a little bit on manpower. Still has that mine. And it's an interesting mine. It's kind of in a in a central position where maybe the infantry can skate off to the side. But the vehicle's a bit more likely to uh, actually run over it. And indeed, it's going to be a second Rakitten. Did the Sherman reveal itself? Might have done. Now, I think this is a mistake from Eternal Sunshine. Has equipped the Dozer Blade, which makes the Sherman slower. Does make it have more health, but makes it slower. I think if you have the medium timing advantage like this, you can see the true successor still, you know, about 40 fuel away. Uh, you should try keep the shoe on a high explosive, trying to do maximum damage, and for that you need maximum mobility. If you're gonna, if you think your enemy is gonna get a medium tank at the same timing as your own medium, then sure, upgrade the dozer blade. But in this case, I think it's a mistake. A lot of economy damage done to the true successor over the last probably eight or so minutes. Would expect uh, enemy medium to be coming in quite slowly, but it looks like he's really just hasn't done anything with it at all. Hasn't seen any combat, and maybe about to get forced back by the double kittens coming through the center. Made out heavy cover soaks a good chunk of the damage, but no retreats. And twenty should be able to chase this down and get the wipe. Does not chase, but gets the wipe anyway. Bit of good fortune there for Eternal Sunshine. Oh, and uh, right as I say that, it's exactly what happens. Ran straight up with the Rakittens and the Sherman dies. That's, that, that had to be five shots from the Rakittens, right? I don't think anything else was doing damage. So that is an extremely late reaction. I know that there was some action going on up here, but five shots from a kitten just sitting there. Side tick into the captain now. And he feels like he needs the anti tank gun, and it's actually a bit lacking in fuel. Oh, if he didn't take captain, he'd be a bit closer to another medium. True success in meanwhile. Struggling a little bit for manpower. The second Rakitten I think was the right choice, but has led to some manpower issues. Can now maybe start to use one of these Rakittens. Like one maybe through the center and one on the edge, maybe to do some capping. Doing on the uh, easy territory sectors. In that way they're maybe in range. If maybe like one point further back if the M20 does start to harass. So quite a lot of health on the building there. The screen is just charging up. Big heavy cover fortification. Looks like uh, going to try to kill those off with the Rakitten now. Get rid of the tank traps. I believe the M20 does have 40 range at this stage, right? Oh, no. It's more range out of it. Three. Not quite there yet. Maybe it has 40 range anyway? I forget. I think I might do, actually. I'm not a huge M20 user myself, but I do enjoy using it. It's actually probably the live vehicle I've had the least experience with playing US Forces the last two years. No, oh, actually no, I haven't. I don't think I've used the Greyhound. <laughs> Alright. A capture point is being overrun. Okay. MG getting forced away. Looks like true success are gonna go straight for the tiger from here, which is understandable. I think it's a fair call. Especially in this case where Eternal Sunshine doesn't have a second medium out at this 
time. If you're not getting pressured by your enemies, medium. A bit more leeway to save for your heavy tank. Has fallen quite far behind on victory points during this, but it's going to be very tough for Eternal Sunshine to shut down a Tiger. It does have one anti tank gun and a couple bazookas, but it's not that impressive. This is the Tiger's armor. This typically, you know, AT guns can be pretty strong through the center of the map, but it can be difficult to rotate and hold any firmer. Can have trouble covering things up. Chewing in the build now for Eternal Sunshine, but you can see that the uh, captain didn't really accomplish that much. I suppose it did give him extra squad or infantry and had, had lost a couple squads, so maybe that was necessary. Still hasn't upgraded the uh, ranges with anything, which is unusual. Maybe he's complaining to put some bazookas on them. No, nope, here we go. Thompson's upgrading now. Last unit to get any upgrades, though. He's upgraded the recently built captain before this. This is a great map for close quarters. You know, there's so many little passageways where you can ambush troops hey, listen up. Listen up. on uh, both sides of the map. Good map for uh, getting those SMGs. Got to be careful, we can retreat through the center here and that will be right past the Sherman. Just throw out a grenade and uh, does decent damage with it. Luckily the Sherman finds itself in some trouble. A few slayers go down anyway. A few uh, light AT mines here do some big damage to the Tiger. Sharon pops the Dozer Blade that allows it to survive. Still on high explosive though, very slow switching over. The Bazooka's coming through. Oh, and there we go, the AT gun. Tiger's in some trouble. Faces up the frontal armor. One more shot from the AT gun. No! Sherman comes in for a shot, bounces though. I wonder if the M20 could have killed the Tigers. Probably it's too much health, right? It's too much. Because I think it gives a penetration bonus here. Vet 3. How much rear armor does the Tiger have? 100? Pro uh, uh, it would have been very slow. Yeah, I don't know. Mastering cast, probably not the best, but might have been able to tickle it, but that's that's a bit too much damage for a tickle. Lucky break though, Tiger does end up escaping. So is the Sherman, I suppose. set up the triple cap here though. This is where the uh, officers can start to become quite strong with their passive sprint. Can be very good at dashing to the edge VPs. Make it tough for the OKW player to counteract that. Going into some uh, Obers, which I think is a fine choice. Good job securing that area. I think if you're going for one more squad of infantry past this point, it should probably be another snaring squad, but I think Obers are fine for right now. Upgrading with the LMG as well. Decent map for the IASTGs, but coming in with a pretty big VET disadvantage. Trying to go for the cap down the south. And 20 coming down though. This could be a nasty retreat as well. Here they go. No grenade into retreat though for Eternal Sunshine. Uh, a little bit far away, it looks like this has been crushed, making the retreat actually a bit better for the true successor. Get to run upwards past the ranges a bit closer and then probably over some more negative cover that would have been worse. Here come the double Rakittens, one on the M20, two on the M20 and there it goes. Should have seen that coming, you know, the M20 at that stage of VET has an incredible amount of vision but didn't dodge away in time. Thanks, 
Support Didn't even smoke in sure time. I think those were both just regular shots. No attack grounds necessary. Here comes the Calliope. A decent uh, idea. Got to find the double or kittens with it, which could be difficult. It's a little bit dicey. I think personally, I probably would have. Oh, he's gone for a second AT gun. I didn't see that actually. I was going to say, personally, I probably would have gone for a Jackson, but with double AT guns, this many bazookas. Life can work if it doesn't run right into the double kittens. Oh, it's going to die here, isn't it? No, the smoke. Where's the attack grounds? Miss. Miss. Oh my god, that's some of the worst Clyde handling I've ever seen. But he gets away with it. The enemy is now at 75 points. <laughs> he wanted to go hunting for the double Akins, but then he forgot about it. Just sitting right there. Luckily, you know, the recon provided the vision, but then the smoke hit the Clyde just before the Rakins were about to shoot. Triple cap running though. True successor has to get something cooking. Sending a squad up to the north. But we're a kittens heading up to the north as well. The tiger still has a lot of repairs to go. They just fell to 50 points. Needs to uh, stop pressing into the center. I know it's very tempting with the tiger at this stage, but the double AT guns there. You need to try force them out of position, try to rotate. Major recon pass coming through, catches the machine gun back here. And the ISG a touch. Pretty bad scatter on it though. It's firing into the fog and at a medium range. Not super tight. Got a little bit unlucky with the scatter, but... Nothing too crazy. And that does mean that the double kitten rotation to the north is actually going to work pretty well. Sherman coming up here, 25 VPs remaining second. Her backup Panzer IV now for the true successor. Busting through every single tree on his way through here, so... Should have heard this through the fog. Should know what's coming and... Double kitten's there. One of them not fully vetted. Not vet two, rather. Regular Sherman would have died there. Well, maybe, maybe he could have got out of range. It is quite a lot slower with that dozer blade. Would have been a close call. And this Raketon now very close to Vet 2. Double Vet 2 Raketons. Very hard to handle. That's what the Calliope's for though. Tiger coming in for a bit of a base inspection. Looks like the Rangers have one bazooka, the Ambo. It's slow packing up to respond to this, but here it goes now. Here comes some more bazookas and the AT gun spinning around. Double AT guns. Calliope. Uh oh. In some trouble. Sherman jumps back inside, switching rounds, but the double Akins are pushed up. Gets found. Tiger now going in for the Calliope. Gets that as well. Bounces on the rear from the bazookas, I think. Bit unfortunate. Yeah, this is the heartache of playing USF, especially if you've lost a couple of your riflemen. No proper mines. Doesn't have enough anti-tank grenades. Panzer IV going to get out of there as well. Rangers coming up. Tiger could... Stay up here, try win this fight, try hold on to the VP. 25 points left, I probably would have attempted it. The enemy is one of our and then the Fox Canadians get left behind. If you play through the center, you probably need some smoke down to attempt this. And there it goes. Well done. You do have the flares, but he's a little low on munis for that, so trying to play economically. Over's well, running off to the side here, getting boomed. By the riflemen now going to cap capping in the north they're going to drain a few more vps the axis so the tiger's coming down though so it might be able to stop decap's going to complete but probably not the capture sharing the bill for eternal sunshine i think at this stage if i was eternal sunshine i'd probably just go for the jackson 
Shermans have not been working out. You're up against two tanks now and the double raquettes. Good thing about the Jackson is you can stay it further uh, further away. It makes it harder for the raquettes to get in range. And uh, you probably go for a machine gun with the extra manpower here. Should be good for locking down the VPs. Still has, you know, the infantry superiority, I'd say, over the true successor. Who, you know, did lo lose that squad uh, a few moments ago. Obers still haven't a chance to vet up yet. If they vet five Obers, maybe might need the Sherman for some high explosive action. Continuing to push in here, which is strange when he could back up and try cap the VP. You have some nice results. Double kittens waiting around this corner. The Sherman's tempted down here. Pops the dozer blade again. A bit slow backing out. Get tell there before a third shot connects though. Both players in here jamming the capture. A major artillery coming down somewhere. Smack out from the Obers. The Obers end up going down. Bit of recover there. Lost them dearly. For not too healthy. Oh, but a, f a fusilier makes its way up to the north doing some capping. That's very important. Looks like uh, Eternal Sunshine hasn't really noticed this yet. Sherman's still up here. Seems like Eternal Sunshine's starting to get a little bit overwhelmed. It's very slow repairing up the Sherman. Everything bouncing, even though he's popping the AP rounds. Bad luck there. You need to keep the Sherman in. At least one more shot. He's worried about the double raquettes, and rightly so. This is definitely very bad luck from these AT gun pins. At this range, with the AP rounds equipped, I think that was sub 25% pin rate from the double AT guns there. So uh, definitely fortunate for the true successor, but you know when you're down to 25 B VP, sometimes you need to take a risk or two. The problem with Eternal Sunshine is just so tunnel visioned on uh, center. Could have probably closed the show playing a bit more on the flanks, trying to squeeze off those last 25 VPs. He's gone for a mortar as well, trying to smoke. Both AT guns did. Sherman repairing. Can't really afford to lose this fuel. Does need it quite badly for another tank. Probably has to go for another AT gun at this stage. Machine gun up here covering the northern VP area. Could use cover to cover on it to smoke. Flank it. Once he reveals it. Building still quite healthy. Usually at this stage it's dead, but hasn't been too much fighting that far back. Drops cover to cover now, but both units are already pinned quite slow to react. They do come out of suppression, but is he paying attention? He's trying to make a play for the center, but the Tiger and the Panzer IV are right there. This is just Free real estate down the bottom, especially with the officer sprint. The Vet 3 officer passive sprint. Probably could win the game right now, honestly. With these squads capping up here. One officer down here. A, you know, a bit of a fake through the center with maybe one squad. Close the show. Does manage to steal away the machine gun, the true successor. Maybe tunnel visioned on the center, didn't notice. The smoke and uh, ends up losing that MG. Goes for a rebuild. We can now deploy a smoke screen to blind the enemy. Which is fine. That or another fusilier. Both good options. Excuse me, got the hiccups a touch. Rebuild on the uh, I mean uh, 
Sherman's finally healthy again. Do you remember you can use the um, create barrier to create heavy cover for your units? It can really help you with VP defenses as US forces in the late game. Especially a few re echelon happen to die and playing commander that doesn't have rifleman sandbags, which both of the dozer commanders uh, don't have. Lift it clumped up on light cover with a tiger right there, no retreat. Deserves to lose that one. Does. Does manage to cap down the far side, so a few points going to drain off the bazooka officer. Gonna get first away himself here. Could drop some artillery, but he's kind of running low on munis at this stage. Might want to save it for some other occasion. Okay, got a Jackson in the build finally for Eternal Sunshine, and now uh, does drop the artillery. Flank going as well. They only drained three points with that move. So it's quite a lot of manpower. Could squeeze out another anti tank gun. It's probably necessary. Maybe end up rebuilding any of the losses. Oh, here we go. Rifle nades. Oh, where are the riflemen going? Here they go. Here they go. Hey! Oh, and a light AT mine as well. There we go. Tiger with damaged engine. Should be green light for the Shim to go up to the north. Force away the troops there. Rifleman got up there to cap. Good game. Well played. I don't know what the Shim is doing though. He's not doing anything. Here comes to Jackson. Seems like he wants to kill the Tiger, which is uh, ordinarily a decent idea. It's a good pin. The Rakin's a little bit too far back. Didn't push up. Here we go now. Ordinarily would be a good idea to try to kill the Tiger, but... Just a few VPs and a winning plate. Right there. Not necessary. Should just going to back out for the repairs. Squad up here is going to get... Oh, he's going to get a Molotov off. Two models are quite far back out of uh, flame damage range. So only the front model is actually taking damage here. And it's quite slow because of that. Mass repairs going on. Tiger's still extremely low. The Sherman, honestly, even with, you know, took two shots worth of damage. Killed the Panzer IV. Should have known that the Tiger is still probably getting repaired. Could have come up here, assisted that rifleman. Weird uh, cover position coming up here for Eternal Sunshine. Here we go, Sherman. Heading up to the north. Got some fuselers up there now as well. We drain a few points. There's not enough defense down the bottom though. Grenade out. Have to expect a grenade in a situation like that because otherwise the fusiliers with no vets cannot win the fight against the captain. So you'll be watching those engagements for a grenade, expecting one to happen. Okay, we've got some base. No, what's that? Some major artillery into the center. Does interrupt the repairs briefly. I was calling the building, Lieutenant, dancing with death. Sherman finally rotating back down. Got the uh, Jackson rolling through the center, but the Rakin's in a good position. And whoa! We lost an infantry unit. Snipes him. That must have been an accuracy shot. From the Tiger. Kills off the Lieutenant there. Otherwise it would have collided with the uh, far side of the uh, tank trap. Cleaned him up behind it. Direct hit, it looked like. One of those uh, three percenters or something like that. 
unfortunate. Okay, coming into cap with the major. The Sherman right here, but again, should be taking advantage of the relative mobility of the Sherman. Trying to play it on the flanks. I'll try butt his head against the tiger. But he's coming down there with some infantry. And unfortunately, again, there's a machine gun down here defending this. That's why you need to go with the Sherman. To uh, clear off the machine gun. Smoke and then trying to go for the cap again. Ranger's going to make a play through the center and this could actually be quite successful. A lot of team weapons here, not very well defended. Ranger's a bit slow moving in and that arrives, that means the Panzer IV arriving. Goes in for a bit of a crush perhaps. Jackson Lee's doing a bit of damage from the back line. This is the second hit though. Here comes the Calliope. All the team weapons are in motion though. It's a pretty decent connection. Oh, there we go, actually getting some great scatter on the tail end. Tiger making a play. Hungry, looking for some revenge. Jackson not in range to fire here. Looking to get around the corner. Trying to repair up the uh, MG or salvage it, I'm not entirely sure. Jackson pushing in. Squad down up here. Captain dies to a grenade. Could be a cap opportunity. Big damage on to the tiger. His own tank traps kind of jamming him, stopping him from chasing effectively. Oh, what is that pathing on the Sherman? What is he doing? Oh, that is a horror show. It looks like he's heading to the north with it now. He had them. This was the time. This was the time to go in for the GG. This is on one shot. This is on two shots. Oh no. Oh, Jackson misses the shot on the Panzer IV, still spinning around. Must be going for some attack rounds, I think. And just a cap, but engine crit on the Sherman stops it from rotating to one of the edges to do any more capping. Clippy is about ready to fire again. If you remembered the position on the machine gun, it hasn't moved since then. Could just drive in here and go for a short range blast on it, clear it off easily. Just for a steal on the MG34. Let's pick up a bazooka. Oh, I saw a bazooka. I don't know. Either way, a steal on the Rakitten now for Eternal Sunshine. So, it's a lot of anti tank now against these OKW tanks. They're going to struggle. Again, uh, the Jackson out here kind of guarding these caps, but yeah, the OKW tanks took so much damage, it's unlikely they come forward. And you've still got some bazookas here. I'll probably be trying to double time repairs on the Sherman so it can get going onto the edges and then try to repair the Jackson after that. Pushing all the way up the center here. Tiger. A little bit of damage. Second stern pipe brought in to try and speed up repairs a touch. 22 points remaining still for the true successor. Clarpy's ready to roll. Did end up losing both officers, both the uh, lieutenant and the captain, so doesn't have. Oh, he's only got sprints now on the major, which is also his main vision tool, which you kind of want to operate with in the center of the map if possible, so it makes it a lot harder to control the flanks. But this is the way. Come up here, chase away whatever's guarding the VP, go for the cap. In this case, the tiger is now healthy enough because he took so long. This could be a Calliope though. Try to spread out so he's not getting AoE suppressed. From cover to cover. Tiger's coming up here to stop the capture. He's going to decap at least. Shimmer switching back to uh, armor piercing. Trying to defend, but we've got a Rakitten up here assisting. 
machine gun comes in here into the smoke to jam the capture. The Panzer IV is down here. Ober's capping in the center meanwhile. What's this Calliope doing? It's AFK and so is the Jackson. Looks like the Jackson's heading down to the bottom now. Quite a very slow reaction. In fact, I'm not going to say quite. That was very slow. Panzer IV hoping for some follow-up damage. Looking for a kill. Lipey now into the center and it knocks out the ogres immediately. Jackson comes around a blind corner, but there's some Shreks back here. He's uh, not in a good position. Could go down now and he's backing off to the side. There are some light AT mines here, but the sweepers are out, so they're not going to detonate. Has a full blitzing. And he gets the kill. You don't want to be going around a blind corner against a vetted Panzer IV because... You know, even if you start firing at the same time, he pops the combat blitz as OKW, which gives him a reload bonus, and he's just going to fire faster than you and get the kill. Don't want to be doing that with the uh, Jackson if possible. Gets the OKW Panzer IV especially, you know, with that rate of fire bonus. Nice to rebuild the Jackson, and now the Tiger doesn't really have any opposition. Just rampaging through the US lines. Enforcement's going on. This is a phase which can be quite difficult as US forces, you know, you trying to provide vision of the Tiger, but the whole time the Tiger's just knocking down your infantry. Very expensive manpower-wise. So we've got the Major sprinting up to the north. As I said, kind of want to be using that through the center for the vision. Jumps into the building, which is extremely low, and loses the squad immediately. The Tiger gets flattened inside. But uh, he's making a bit more of a coordinated push into the north. Oh no, his own light AT mine's doing dirty there. Go off in a chain reaction. On that P4 hit. Still has enough anti-tank to make this work. Sharon coming in here, not on full health. Gonna take engine damage. Usually has managed to get away, but quite a lot of damage onto these US tanks. True successor just biding his time. Clypey's ready to rumble again. Okay, now the US player is getting very low himself, he needs to get something cooking, there's a flank opportunity coming down through the center here, see what happens, Clypey still on this side can provide some good pressure against the support weapons, the US tanks are healthy, they're ready to go, only have the one raquette now for the true successor, so don't have to be as scared, and here it goes, bring in the major recon pass, Ideally you want your tanks to be in a bit more of a position to capitalize on this brief glimpse of vision. Supply on the machine gun to open up the center. Luckily one model was way off to the side. Ends up surviving that. Fusil is very close to death. Luckily the Sherman missing that follow-up hit. Don't come in range for any more damage. The bazookas are there. Got the Raketan. Got the Jackson. Sherman's still on high explosive. Red Echelon getting suppressed. Imagine if that had switched over to armor piercing. Good ice, uh, good major artillery. Knocks out the ISG, but Major goes down to the Fusiliers. Now the high explosive can get to work. Decent hits. Does not have a machine gun upgrade on it though, so I don't know why he's got hundreds of munitions. Come 
coming forwards here with the Sherman. The kitten's rolling up now though. Sherman don't want to be taking uh, shots like this if possible. Oh, and here we go. They've got some bazookas on the stern pose. The Jackson now in some major trouble. And the Jackson goes down to the flanking stern pose. Ouch. It's all out wall for the center. Stern pose have been forced away. Oh, great shot from the Sherman, though. Could pop off some smoke here. Go for the capture. Sherman smoke. Rangers making a dash. What? A, making a dash for the Southern VP. The kitten's rolled up now. Sherman coming around the corner. Second machine gun back here. Okay, he does. He's got some smoke. I think that's from the mortar, though. Whoever that is. The Rangers. Where are, they, where are the Rangers going? Where are they going? Oh, this is... <sighs> Let's take a deep breath there. God! What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh my god. What are you doing? What are you doing? This is... I never... I've never been... I can't even talk, I'm so angry. This is the worst play I've ever seen. If he just ran those rangers to here... He would have won the game by now. The enemy is overrunning one of our capture points. Oh my god. Why do you even need an ISG for? You already got a mortar. You got got a calliope. A capture point is oh. under attack. You're ready to go, man. You just kill it. Ah. <sighs> I've calmed down a bit. i calmed down a bit. He, d he doesn't have any anti-tank. He's, he's got this fresh squad of rangers. D didn't pick up any bazookas on them. He's got one Rakitten. One Sherman, which can use armor piercing. But the Rakitten's not full health, so likely to die to this next shot, shot of the tiger. There it goes. Sherman getting forced away in the north. No snare, at least. It's on a high explosive. And here we go. Coming into the center for the decapture. 14 points remaining. 50 cal ends up retreating, though. ISG. Gonna get decrewed. Glad he picked that up. MG goes down as well. Sherman nowhere to be seen. Lipe's there. He's going to go for a barrage into the center, I think. So, I don't have any other ideas. Barrage. Doesn't look like it's going to hit anything. Steal back of the machine gun now. 14 points remaining. Triple cap, though. He's too slow. Can't get it done in time. So I'm going to come back up. Exact same... Nothing's moved up here. Since he ran away. And loses the game. <sighs> well, you know, true successor. Well played, you know. Uh, you, you hung in there, played hard. But this was just an abysmal throw from Eternal Sunshine of Spotless Mind. He, he managed to find the perfect balance of aggression so that he couldn't kill the tiger and lack of capping power so he couldn't close the show on the victory points very well done you know that it takes an expert to uh navigate that kind of situation this 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 move with the rangers picking up the isg instead of just running to the southern vp to just win the game never have i seen something so bad in one of my games, I don't think. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a play worse than that. No joke. And, you know, I've cast some, like, rank 3,000 4v4s. I don't think I've ever seen a play worse than that. A bunch of uh, mines as well. That could have been cheeky on the retreat path. Could have led to some squad wipes. 
but yeah, this was uh, really bad. There was an opportunity, you know, I think the Sherman took one shot. The Jackson was also one shot, like had taken one shot of damage. So they're both four and three shots to left to die. When the Tiger was on two hits and the Panzer IV was on one hits and he didn't push in, he did donuts in here. Well, but yeah, the true successor uh, needs some flak after track control, uh, needs some work. The, need to avoid taking anti-tank grenades, the positioning on it needs to be stronger. Maybe the uh, target selection, you need to make sure you keep, a, if you suppress a squad, you need to make sure it stays suppressed, the snaring squad. There's a moment over here where there was like, I think a rifleman back here, maybe some rangers over here. No supporting infantry to keep them suppressed, keep them under fire. So when you switch from the squad to the uh, to the rangers, eventually you know they recover from suppression because they're not in combat anymore and then got the snare off and i think that's what led to the kill on the flak and then from there it was a real struggle without the flak to assist in all the fighting it can be tough on this map to handle an enemy light vehicle and and generally a force that's better than you at close quarters fighting u.s forces in the early stages before the map opens up a bit more uh, yeah, those things need some work. And generally, you know, it was okay. The two uh, two fox screen isn't too few slayers, but can still get you into some trouble. Overall, though, I think the build decisions were generally pretty good. Uh, yeah. GG. Well, anyway, guys, wrap on that. If you like your game to be cast by me, details are in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you off for the next thrilling installment. Goodbye and good luck.